Friends, uh, over the next couple of weeks, I'll be preaching from uh, 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians. And so if you have your scripture with you, please turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 this morning. Reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, uh, verse 1. So when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. We sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker in God's service in spreading the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith, so that no one would be unsettled by these trials, for you know quite well that we are destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and that our labors might have been in vain. But Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought good news about your faith and love. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us and that you long to see us just as we also long to see you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in all our distress and persecution, we are encouraged about you because of your faith. For now, we really live, since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day, we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father, himself and our Lord Jesus, clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your heart so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father, when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Uh, this is God's word for us this morning. Uh, shall we bow down for a short word of prayer uh, as we continue to listen for God's word this morning? Let's do that. God of wisdom, you teach us with love, you touch us with mercy, and you challenge us with truth. Send your Holy Spirit to help us grasp your love, mercy, and truth in the scriptures as we encounter your living word today. Amen. Yeah. Well, good morning. Uh, so good to see all of you. Uh, missed you over the last few weeks, and uh, so it's good to be here, uh, to worshiping you, uh, worshiping our God uh, together with you. Um, friends, uh, as we think about our word today, I just want to ask you a question to start off. Uh, are there things that in life you wish you didn't give up on? Um, I don't know, it could be piano lessons. Uh, maybe you started and you stop. Uh, any hobby activities that you started and maybe you stop, but you wish you carried on. And uh, maybe there are things that you do now that you've been doing for quite a while. And uh, maybe it comes to you naturally, it's very easy. Uh, but for maybe some people that, you know, it's quite difficult. Um, you know, I couldn't believe it. Like, I, I took my uh, nephew fishing over uh, the summer, and that was his first time fishing. And uh, you ever try to teach someone how to fish? <laughs> like, just casting is, I, I just don't even think about it anymore because I've been doing it for a few years now. But boy, to try to teach him to open the bale, hold on to the string, and to cast it... Um, it was, it was really eye-opening to see somebody who's in their 20s trying to learn how to do something new. Uh, and, and I guess he would like me to take him again one day, and if he keeps doing it, I'm sure he'll get better. But that's like anything, right? Uh, but, you know, and there's some things that are trivial. If you stop doing it, it's fine. But maybe things like a good diet plan, a good exercise plan. Uh, how about developing a good prayer life? Or how about reading your scripture daily? Whether you do it or not, some of these things, times are just going to go by anyway. 
But after a year, maybe somebody's read the Bible all the way through once because maybe they've been reading about a little shy of four chapters a day and that'll get you through the whole Bible in one year. But maybe there's some people who just given up after Genesis and maybe they have read Genesis like 50 times in their life. You know, uh, and so, but the thing is, whether you don't do it or not do it, the time's just going to keep going by anyway. But after a year, two, three, some people might have a study of one Bible under their belt. A two, three, four. And, and I'm sure the people who do it, they're always so glad that they did it, right? Things that are good for us, nobody ever complains yeah, I, I'm so regret like stud, I developed good study habits. You ever has, have anybody complain about that in university during exam time? I, I'm really upset I have good study habits. Nobody complains about that. But is it hard to develop good study habits? Of course it is. But there are things that are worth fighting for, and there are things that are worth not giving up on. And I don't know about you, but I think one thing that we never want to see people give up on is people. People. You know, Apostle Paul and his partners in their second missionary journey, they find themselves in Philippi where they had a bit of success uh, in sharing the gospel and a good response but they also ended up in jail. But they never gave up on God and the mission that they were on. And after the stint, you know where they found themselves? They found themselves in Thessalonica. Thessalonica. And, and because of that, we saw the work of God happen. And because of that, we see this letter. And because of that, this letter is being read and preached throughout the churches all over the world. And the very same encouragement that church needed and received is also being encouraged uh, upon many other churches around the world. And what if Paul just gave up after his jail stint in Philippi? I mean, it would be so easy to see somebody do that, wouldn't it? God, here I am, trying to do your work. Help me out a little bit. Why am I locked up in jail? I quit. And I suppose he could have done that. And maybe who knows? I mean, if we were the church back then, how would we have prayed for Paul when we found out he's being persecuted and he's locked up in jail? We probably would be praying, God, please release Paul from jail and bring him back to us safely, will we have prayed that his journey would continue? I don't know. It could go half and half, right? How many of you would have prayed for safe return? Right? How many of you would have just prayed for continuance in the missionary, you know, journey? Right? So, you know, sometimes it, it, it feels like maybe the loving thing is to pray for release and for him to come back. <clears throat> maybe that wasn't God's plan for him. And thank God that Paul never quit. And as a result, we get to hear a story of these wonderful people in Thessalonica who had responded to faith, people that God was drawing to himself. You know, when Paul found himself in Thessalonica, Thessalonica, we also see from the book of Acts chapter 17 that Paul and his companions, when they went to Thessalonica, as it was their game plan, they actually went to people who were already interested in God, people who were familiar with the scripture. So Paul, he went to the synagogue. And the people who are at the synagogue learning about God's word obviously would be people who are interested in the things about faith. And so Paul, he went there on three Sabbaths, we are told, and he reasoned with them from the scripture, explaining and proving that Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. 
And this Jesus I'm proclaiming to you is the Messiah. And after those three weeks of Paul going and worshiping with them and testifying about Christ and uh, just reasoning with them from Scripture, we're told that a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women had come to faith. So these women who were influential in this city, and, and by the way, Thessalonica was uh, also uh, the capital city of Macedonia and the Roman Empire at the time. And so it was a place of commerce and a place of influence. And, and so how far the reach of these uh, believers had gone, we're not sure. Uh, but I'm sure it, it was significant. And, um, you know, even in the synagogue, not only Jewish people who fear God, but there were also a large number of God-fearing Greeks that were there. And so it was very strategic for Paul to go to a place where people are already interested in the things of God. And as a Paul's a result of his witness and uh, his presence there, uh, that God used him to bring people to faith. But as people are now accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior, well, the non-believing Jews or the people that were in the synagogue started to get jealous. And, and they started to round up some bad characters from the marketplace, and they started a mob and a riot. And many of you who've read this in the book of Acts would know that the crowd, they rushed Jason's house uh, looking for Paul and Silas to order, uh, in order to bring them out to the crowd, but they couldn't find them. Uh, and, and so Jason and some other believers, uh, they had to go before the city official and they had to post bond. And now we're told the believers in Thessalonica thought that it was not safe for Paul and Silas to be there anymore. So uh, when the uh, night had set, uh, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. And arriving there, what did they do? They went to the Jewish synagogue again. Paul, there's no quit in him, is there? How many of you would have been discouraged at this point? If you've experienced jail, you have a mob coming, and you, you must be thinking, God, I'm trying to do your work. Why is there so much obstacle? But didn't Jesus our Lord also find obstacles along the way? And isn't it, because he had this, all the obstacles and all the trials and all the persecution, but yet he never quit and kept loving us and sacrificed himself on the cross that makes the sacrifice even all the more valuable and precious. So the grace that we have received is not cheap. And also the gift that Paul is offering to others and the service in the name of Christ is not cheap. It cost him something. But he also know that the prize, the people that God were drawing to himself, people that God was saving, was worth all the price that he would pay. Doing God's work is not easy. Life is not easy. As a matter of fact, loving people, as much as we sing about it, I mean, think of all the songs that you sing. How much of those songs are about love? A good majority of them. But have you ever tried to love somebody for a long time? Not just when you're dating, but through marriage. Not when your child is just a newborn, but when they start to grow up and have a mind of their own. You know, loving somebody for a long time, it's not easy. But I'm so glad that Apostle Paul, driven, motivated, encouraged by God, that he never quit. But you can imagine Apostle Paul, who had to flee Thessalonica in such a hurry. Uh, he must have been 
very startled and very worried, very unsettled and very troubled as to what has happened to the people of Thessalonica. I mean, some of you might think, well, hey, he abandoned them, he chickened out. But you know, Paul as a leader of this movement or someone planted the, planting the church there, if they come after Apostle Paul, don't you think that they would also come after the people who were part of that congregation as well? So it probably was better that Apostle Paul left, not only for his sake, but also for the people who would have been grouped together with him. Uh, but anyhow, even though there was distance now between the people in Thessalonica, Thessalonica and Paul, he never stopped caring about them. And so as he continued to pray about them, they, they were wonder, he was wondering what he should do. And they had this idea that they would send Timothy. Probably out of the three of them, maybe Timothy, having a Gentile father, maybe he would blend in the best and would be uh, probably uh, not noticed as much. If Paul would have went, he probably would have been noticed for sure. So Timothy goes, and uh, they're just eagerly waiting for the condition of the church. I mean, it's a young church, and Paul had to leave so quick. But to their surprise, when they had sent Timothy to strengthen them, encourage them, Timothy, he comes back in verse 6, we're told, has brought Good news. And the good news is not that they're in, not in jail. The good news is not that their business has not been harmed. But the top priority and concern that Paul has for the people of Thessalonica is that the good news is about their faith and their love. Their faith is flourishing. Even in the midst of hardship and persecution, difficulties that they're facing, they're learning to trust God even all the more. You know, we often pray for peace. And we often pray for comfort. And we all want that, because who wants to be uncomfortable? Right? We pay a lot of money to be comfortable. I mean... I tell you, during this vacation, I looked at some of the first seats with the envy on a long haul. But I also know that you probably would pay, what, three, four, five times to sit on the first seat versus economy? But we pay a lot of money for comfort. And I, and I get it. We buy nice cars, nice home for comfort. But what is of most concern about Paul is their faith and love. And I don't know about you, but I remember going to university for the first time and leaving home for the first time for an extended period of time. It was not comfortable. <laughs> I had to cook. I had to go shopping on a budget. No longer throwing whatever I want into the grocery in you know, a cart when I go with that, you know, shopping with that. I had to like budget everything and, you know, do price check and, you know, go buy that chicken after eight o'clock uh, because it's like 50% off and, you know, it's budgeted and get coupons for pizzas and buy the big cheapies and, you know, make it last. And that, those are university days. But I tell you, being alone, during those years, being uncomfortable, being lonely, it made me trust in God like no other time before. We don't like to be in those positions when we are experiencing difficulty, adversaries, opposition, persecution. But when you're at the end of your rope, when you're at the end of your strength, it really makes you look up and depend on God like life depends on him. And it's often during those times that our faith gets tested, that our faith gets pruned, and that our faith gets worked, and it gets strengthened, and it grows. 
And that's what happened here in Thessalonica. It wasn't just the work of Paul. It wasn't just the work of Thessalonians. It was the work of God's spirit in them. Yes, they were doing God's work, but God blessed their work and they were growing in their faith and also in their love. How important that is. And, you know, Paul, again in verse 7, we were encouraged about you, you because of your faith. He could be concentrating, focusing about anything, but his top concern for the people in the church of Thessalonica was, what is the condition of their faith? but their trust and their belief in God and the good news is growing. And Paul is realistic, though. In verse 11, uh, sorry, verse 10, uh, we're told that he's praying that God may allow us to see you again so that we may supply what is lacking in your faith. Again, it's a concern for their faith, for their faith to grow, to be strengthened, and, and to continue to mature in the areas that they are lacking. It's a process. And Paul was concerned about that. So Paul is praying, now may our God, our Father himself, and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us, come to you. That's their desire, to come and see them. And, and secondly, May the Lord make your love increase and overflow. And also, may he strengthen your heart so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father, uh, that when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. So friends, in many ways, the book of Thessalonians is like the story of watchfulness that Jesus talked about. Remember in Luke 12, Jesus talks about how a master had gone away uh, to a banquet and he's left the servants in charge. But the servants, they don't know when the master is coming. And, and so the master wants them to be faithful even while he's gone, not only when he's watching or not only when he's around, but the servants who are faithful are the ones who are mindful of the concerns of the master and fulfills those needs even when the master is not around. And that's what Thessalonians is really being played out, that they are waiting until Jesus to come back, but until then, though they might have opportunities where they might want to doze off or slack, uh, but that they are being encouraged to continue to grow in faith and continues with the purpose to grow and to continue to grow in love and faith to do God's bidding and to be blameless when God returns. And that's what they are doing. Friends, what is that God wants you to not give up? Who are some of the people that God does not want you to give upon? You know, George Mueller, uh, who was a great Christian evangelist and also the director of the Ashley Down Orphanage in Bristol, England, and now many years ago, that he started to pray for, uh, one day started to pray for his five friends. And after many months, one of them actually came to Christ and was very excited. And uh, do you know when the next one would come to faith? 10 years later, he kept praying for those five friends. First person uh, came to faith only after a few months, but the next, second and third came to faith 10 years later. But he kept praying for his remaining two friends and it took 25 years before the fourth man was saved. 
And, uh, but he kept praying for the last, uh, the fifth friend, and he persevered in, per, persevered in prayer until his death for the fifth friend. And throughout those 52 years, he never gave up hoping that he would come to know Jesus Christ as his loving Savior. And his faith was rewarded for soon after Mueller's funeral, the last one came to faith in Christ. Friends, sometimes our prayers might not be answered right away. Sometimes, even when you're doing God's work, that you will find opposition. That sometimes when you want to do even good things, you'll find it difficult. You ever try to establish prayer time and scripture reading time? Does distractions come and, you know, does the evil one work? that you don't establish those things? Because why? The evil one wants to make sure that we as people of God would not be effective. And I guarantee you, when you get rid of prayer and God's word in your life, it will make us very weak. It's when we are abiding in our Lord in word and in fellowship and prayer with the Lord and in strength uh, that he will make us effective and fruitful. And it's only in God's strength that we will not give up because our feelings, our strength, it has a limit. But God's strength, his wisdom has no limit. So friends, that's my encouragement to you and also to me this year. Who are the people that God has called us to care for, to love? What has God also called us to, to grow in the areas of our faith uh, that we can continue to mature during this season? Just as Paul never gave up on his serving the Lord, and, and just as the Thessalonians in the strength of God's spirit was also growing and maturing in their faith. I hope that same spirit of God that is, was powerful working in Thessalonica would also do the same for us. That as people of God, as we continue to look to God in faith, uh, that he would help our faith to mature and to grow. And that our love for God and for people would abound and that we would never give up. So church, I cheer you on. Let's cheer each other on as we continue to grow in faith and to grow in love for God and for the things that God loves as well. Let us pray. Our Lord God and our Father, we thank you so much that people matter to you, that your children matter to you. Lord, we thank you that your love that was so powerfully working in the life of Apostle Paul, we're so thankful that he never gave up uh, for the people of Thessalonica. And uh, Lord, we also pray that you would also give us love from heaven, the kind of love that never quits. Lord, um, it's hard. Uh, sometimes dealing with people. Uh, but Lord, we pray that you give us the faith to know that this is your battle uh, and to know that salvation belongs to you. It is not by our strength and might, but Lord, it's by you uh, building your house that it will last. And so Father, as we continue to lift up all our concerns and cares to you in prayer, and the Lord, especially concern and love for the people that you have placed in our lives, Lord, give us perseverance, the perseverance of Christ that loved uh, his people uh, to the end. And I pray, Lord, that you would also give us humility, uh, that this year, that you would also give us clear to mind and clear direction in the areas where you're also pruning and working in our lives, that we may also grow uh, in faith as well, that we might be effective and that we also may grow in the power, the strength, and also joy of your kingdom as well. 
So Lord, that we lift up all these things to you in Jesus' name. Amen.